Yeah. All right. So welcome to the Sunderland School Committee for Tuesday, March 15th, 2016. Thanks, everybody. Um, and uh, today uh, we will um, be considering the FY17 budget, um, including a public hearing. Um, there right now we have a pretty uh, thin public, um, so we'll uh, take care of a couple of the uh, items on the agenda and then go into the public hearing and then we can keep discussing the budget and then move into uh, um, <coughs> Okay, so uh, start with the uh, uh, review and approval of the minutes for February 23rd, 2016. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Seconded. Any discussion? Mm. Comments? And, all right, corrections? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Unanimous. All right. Um, and then the uh, financial statements. Okay, so you have six warrants to sign tonight that total $34,106.36. Uh, to be totally honest, I haven't even looked at our report this month. I uh, printed it out at 524, needed to be at 530. Um, but we're still, I, I don't, I'm not seeing any major changes. Um, from the last time we met, we do still have a few lines over, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, the only new thing I have to report is that um, the bubbler is finito, um, and it's gonna cost about $1,500 to replace it. Um, that was worked on by Mr. Barshevsky and our director of facilities, Mr. Lesko. Uh, for $1,500, we're going to get a new bubbler um, for Which it. Which water fountain is this by? By the cafeteria. Oh, the one by, and that's mm -hmm. used a yeah. lot. Right, yeah. yeah. We, okay. It's a requirement that there's portable right. water right. At, at the lunch site. Um, so <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and hope that we're going to have the um, savings and heat. Do. Um because do, do the kids in school use bringing water bottles a reasonable amount or not these days? I'm, I, what I'm wondering is like with those, you know they have the kind where that are kind of dual purpose water fountain, water bottle filler. And, that, and that's it, what this is going to feature. Cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I figured probably they'd move to where most of them sure. are like that now. But I say curious. bubbler, but what's going to be a water fountain? Yeah. What? <laughs> you said that was fifteen hundred. Yes, that's about the that answer. we have okay. is fifteen hundred. So we're going to go ahead and then replace that because it is the cafeteria portable water, um, and we'll find some savings somewhere to take care of that. I have a feeling that gets used a lot outside of school as well. Yeah, it does. I was just using it this week. <laughs> <laughs> the basketball tournament. We'll make sure that it gets fixed. Yeah. See, you maybe you guys broke it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't me. But. Well, I think um, the water fountain has a few years on it, and when they were looking for a replacement part, they don't make it. They don't make yeah. it anymore. It's original to the building. Yeah. So, yeah. We tried. We tried. <laughs> And that's all I have to report unless someone has any questions. All right. Any questions? I'm not hearing any. Okay. Um, so then uh, we'll go to the uh, FY17 budget and um, we have public comment on the agenda. Um, we do have the, the media with us. I don't know if there's any comment <laughs> there. Um, so uh, we, we can go into our then discussion of it. Um, and uh, I'll just let you kick it off, guys. Well, we've, we've, you know, we've had some lengthy discussions. We've been before the um, select board with it. And since the last um, time we met, percentage has not changed. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that the majority of the increase is because of the net school spending. Um, we have an additional first grade teacher. Um, what I have said at all of the uh, public hearings is that 
I look at all of the budgets this year as maintaining what we currently are doing. We're not looking to do any major initiatives. Um, the increase in the first grade teacher is because you are the only school that is increasing in numbers. And so it bodes watching as we go forward. Um, we are keeping a very close eye on trying to be creative on how we are dealing with our preschool and kindergarten needs right now. Um, Kim McCarthy, we are very fortunate to have her because she is trying to come up with some different scenarios. Um, then welcome to new family the other day. Um, today. Today. Uh, first day. So right. we're at 240 now. And in what grade? Uh, first, fourth, and sixth. So sixth grade is up to 30. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good on the one hand, but it is really pushing the envelope on the other. So, so we will do our best to just keep you informed. And then throughout the summer, you know, I, I think Ben needs to, I, I know you will be be on top of it. He's going to be a very busy young man this summer because we've reviewed all the summer programs that are admin this morning, admin team meeting this morning, and, and they're all here <laughs> except for preschool because of the construction in Deerfield. Okay. So um, preschool is going to be in Waitley and then there's going to be a preschool program in, in Conway as well. But the majority of the programs, the River Valley, the Reading Camp, um, the Horizons, Horizons programs, the Life that. Skills programs, uh, the math camp is all here, so it's going to be a very, very busy building this summer. It, it is something we have made our um, facilities manager aware of because there's going to be some challenges in getting ready for the school year. However, everything is slated to stop August 12th. <coughs> recommendation for the school committee at our joint meeting in April is not to have school start until after Labor Day because of the Deerfield Root Roof Project, which would be September 2nd, 7th. So there will be a three-week period um, to get the building up to snuff and trying to think of ways to bring teams of custodians here so that does, the burden doesn't mm -hmm. just fall. But again, that is a recommendation. The school committee has not voted that. They will not vote it until your joint meeting in April. So I don't know if you have any specific questions of, of Patty and I over the budget. I, d I just want to bring to your attention, though, we, I didn't change the bottom line, but three lines did change. Because when I went back and reviewed the last budget, two things, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> two things hadn't gotten updated. <coughs> One was the superintendent. One was the superintendent of uh, the central office line numbers had been changed and the budget didn't reflect that. And the COLA adjustment came in for our busing contract and the adjustment was negative. So in the, in the decreases, you'll see that there's a decrease in the regular transportation of 4,510. Mm -hmm. In the other operational increases, the percentage um, increase in central office percentage went up to 14,390. So I just worked the Chromebooks down to 1460, 682. Okay. I'm sorry. She could be a grandmother. I'm on baby patrol, so. Ooh. Go, continue talking about right. yourselves. I know, I'm kind of excited. <laughs> I mean, not that I wasn't excited about discussing the budget. <laughs> coming sooner, that's, cool. that's all. Cool. Um, so um, okay, so that's a so you said it was like three. Oh, forty six hundred dollars came off of the Chromebooks and had to go. Okay, to to, to, to this the increase, increase in the central, central office. office. Percentage. Gotcha. But otherwise, our number stayed intact, and and it has to, so that we meet net school spending, as we had discussed with the select board and right. the finance committee. If we go any lower, we we risk losing right. our aid. So here's here's. My a question. Uh, I mean, I think it's probably a, a moot question because I, I strongly suspect, given recent years, that we're going to uh, need and want the two classrooms in coming 
for the, in the kindergarten. That's correct. Coming in. If there was, if there was, so I guess if there was some dramatic shift and all of a sudden, yeah, all those, those kindergarten age kids left Sunderland and Mass and we found ourselves with a smaller population for that. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, and it really did make sense to have two classrooms. Would that, would our, would our net school spending also be impacted because our enrollment was down? Yes, and, but it would take over a full year for that to happen. And that's why we, keep, we try to keep yeah. the school choice a year in a row. Right. Not only if school choice changes, but also if our, right. our own foundation enrollment. Which was going to be my next point. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is <laughs> that I'm even sure if that know. were to happen, this is still the budget we need because we know what the situation, that we know we've been over relying on school choice to try to keep our mm -hmm. budgets down. And we know we're already going to, even with this budget, we're going to have that challenge next in the next budget cycle. And so to, to try to to try to take this down any further would just set us ourselves up I think, for something that would be even more challenging the following year, and and would be and would be even more of a dramatic one year shift for, right. for the town. I think. So I, I don't, you know I don't think it's just, it doesn't. I think this is the right thing to do in under all considerations. Mm -hmm. So I just noticed that. I, I did leave out the school choice page, unfortunately. But I do want to um, <coughs> take it to it before, though. Page yeah, we had it three of times. eight, um, <laughs> nine. Uh, um, so pages three of 19 to 11 and 19, that's the town appropriation line item detail. But what I did add for you is on page, starting on page 12, I'm putting all our all our expenditures in the same format as our budget, so you can truly see what we are spending in each line item. So if you just look at the you can look at the detail at your leisure, but if you go to the last page, um, which is so, 19 of 19. So just as we're getting there, that so like if I am on one of these pages and there's more than one source, then over at the, the right end will be the sum of Correct. all those sources. And that's the real total expenditure of that line right. item, not just what the town put toward. Exactly. And before, we always used to look at the line item detail just by the town appropriation. And it really makes sense that we're looking at the line item detail by all funds. So if you look at 18 of 19, the total amount of money that Sunderland Elementary will be spending in the fiscal year 17 is 2,939,574. The town will fund 80.83% of that at 2376190. School choice will pick up 12.94% at 384.68. The early childhood tuitions will pay $20,000 in salary. The SPED revolving, which is our Horizons program for tuitioned in kids, will be spending 70,310 or 2.39. Title one, which is an estimate, we uh, it, it changes every year. It could go down a little, it could go up a little. Uh, Twelve thousand one hundred dollars, and the our our big sped grant is going to be paying eighty thousand five hundred six or two point seven four percent. So every year, Marty and I have been trying to get you more and more information. Um, and the school, the school choice analysis should be in here, and I apologize, and the narrative isn't. So after you take your vote tonight. I will finish that and you'll have, um, you can see we put the, the nice new page in with every, all the school committee people's names who, per, you know, who were in the school committee approving this budget. Um, so we're really trying to make this document as transparent as possible. And I just want to go back, have your attention to eight, page 18 because I think this is why, as, as you look for, towards the future, this is why the towns are so frustrated because mm -hmm. they are bearing the burden of 80 percent. Schools like ours that are higher functioning, have a low poverty rate, who qualify for so little, and so that they continually are paying between 78 and 82 percent of mm -hmm. school budgets. And so it's just good, I, I, I'm glad that it's broken out like this because I think they were kind of hidden and you'd see a salary here or a salary there tucked into it. When you actually see the dollar amounts that yeah. are being picked yeah, up. No. <clears throat> um, this and, is, 
you know, I, I personally feel that it's not something that you're going to be able to sustain over a long period of time. My question for, just historically speaking, when you, you were principal here, what, what was the percentage that the town would cover at that time? Has this 80% continuing just gone up, up, up? Mm -hmm. Was it? Yeah. It has. We had more state money. Yeah. Was it um, something like 60, 70%? It was probably closer between 70, 75%. 70, 75? Yeah. Okay. But I have seen, you know, the state funding just continually decrease. Now, at the time, school choice, I mean, we had four or five schools, choice students, period. That was in the inception of it. So school choice, as far as uh, supporting the budget, was negligible. It never supported a salary. It supported a computer here or there, mm -hmm. and that was it. Now, how much does the town's Chapter 70, what we get? Chapter 70 get impacted by what the enroll what's happening with our affected a great deal by your enrollment and enrollment fluctuations, the wealth factor that you know is calculated by the right. state. So what they're trying so the to do is get everybody to be paying their fair share. Right. And they do that by the combination of the chapter seventy funding and also right. the uh, minimum local contributions. Right. Um, which both are, 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 our chapter 70 hasn't changed. I think they've given us, what, $20, $20 per, per student, student for the past two years. That's our increase. So our increase, I believe, for the district was like less than $4,000. <clears> for all five schools. It, you know, you can't do anything with that. And that's why when so I get to my report, I'll talk about this rural schools coalition that we're starting to form. Mm -hmm. to try to get some additional funding. So even that behind the scenes, because I'm thinking behind the scenes, there's that, you know, that in theory should help offset what we're asking for because of our increasing enrollment, but but it's a drop in the bucket, basically. Is Correct. What, what, Correct. Yeah. Um, okay. So if there's anything else, any other type of analysis, which Doug, I know you love to try to think a one up for me, if there's something <laughs> else that would make this budget easier, for you as a committee or um, for the public to understand, please let me know because like I said, we're trying to add transparency every year by trying to be making, producing a clearer and clearer document. Thank you, so this is awesome. I mean, you know, I, we talked about this in the past where, you know, somebody from the finance committee, understandably they're doing their job and they're looking deep at things and they'll, and they'll see, you know, a number change from year to year and they're like, well, why are you spending so much more there? And mm -hmm. and 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 it's the fact is, and it might it might be in the narrative, but you know, then it's they're not they've lost track of that by the time you're diving through the numbers, and 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 it's just oh, a grant went away, or state funding went away, or you know what we got from from one of these other sources went down. It wasn't that we were spending, or you know, in some cases it is we're spending more, and there's a reason. But um, yeah, this is super. Cool, so thank you. Uh, all right, I've talked a lot. Any no, this is maybe a little bit repetitive, but so we got the letter. So even if we try to chop anything out of this, that's going to put us below, yes. and they're going to threaten us with this. So they're saying that right. we had a shortfall of twenty-five thousand, so we had to spend that money. Right. Where exactly did we allocate well, that? Uh, all over. Okay. Uh, you know, um, the select board were thinking that they would just give it to us this year. Um, and and it's, it's going to be recurring every year. So the select board thought they would give us twenty five thousand dollars because we are short right. this year in sixteen. In our current year right. as well, we were short in sixteen. Okay. So they thought they would give us the money, and it's just easier to plan the budget. So we're planning on more Chromebooks. Ben's um, going to be updating his literacy um, closets, especially for social studies and with science, science, science. genres. Yeah. Um, so we did that. We went back. To Ben's prerogatives um, that he, you know what he had ranked as his what was important for him, and we added those to the budget. So at least it's going to good use. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, there's no such thing as a bad use in the school. Right? Of course. And those are the things that we typically don't have the money for because we're so people heavy. So I think that by putting it to those items, it, it really is um, a good spend in the money. Mm -hmm. So this may be also far beyond what you have the ability to foresee, but when I look back at uh, Frontiers <coughs> last year, where we had to really 
tightened up, mm -hmm. sacrificed a lot. The way I viewed it was we sacrificed this year so we put it into a better position <coughs> next year. This is going to be a, a tough one for the town to swallow, but will this put us in a better position next year, or, or do you think we're going to be like facing the exact same thing next year? Well, <coughs> I think, no. Do I think, will we have a 10% increase next year? No, I, I don't see that. Um, but will we have, we have to spend with whatever determines our net school spending. And the, the problem is it, it's, just a, it, it's just a changing of the money. So before, they were spending that money on tuitions for kids choosing and charging out. Now, there are no kids choosing, or very few kids choosing and charging out. So that money comes back to the school. <laughs> So will we see another 10%? No, because we made the leap this year and now we're just going to sustain that. The challenge for us next year though is, right, is so with choice, we got into where we were, so we're a year in arrears, and then we were taking a little from the next year mm -hmm. because it was, you know, that yeah, or being an untenable yeah. position uh, um, going to the town. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, and, and so we can do that for a little while <laughs> and then and then we can't. And so then we can, you know, so we're spending a, a little more than we're actually collecting in the year. Mm -hmm. And so and so we so and if we stop doing that, then, you know, there's it's an effectively well, then, a decrease in that. that source. I mean, then that's the, 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 that's the danger with school choice, because yep. right now with our new population, our, um, our school choice is at 16.25% uh, of our population, but our budget's only able to sustain 13% of our budget. Right. You know, most people will say, no, if we have 16% school choice, 16% of our budget should be that. But it can't because the money remains the same, but the expenses on that budget increase every year because it's mostly people. So every time somebody gets a raise, but we don't get a raise in the $5,000. So, you know, people try to tie that correlation, but it doesn't really work. The other piece, too, is your enrollment gets higher, the fewer slots that you will have yeah. across all grade levels. Correct. And you cannot predict who's going to apply for what grade yeah. level. Yeah. So you may simultaneously see an increase in population, but a decrease in school choice dollars. Right. And, yeah, and especially if we have a year uh, where we had a lot in one year graduate, and you know, have a population where it doesn't make sense to right. to go choice in that next kindergarten. That's going to be a financial hit. Now, at that time, we might then, you know, be in a position where we, you know, there should be one less teacher in the building, um, too. But uh, anyway, I, I think you know, that to your question, uh, there's going to be a, that challenge next. I think in next year's budget. I mean. Concur. If, if, if it's, it's, it's further away, but I think we have to start adjusting back next it, right. next year. If it not all the way back, at least we're going to have close. a collective bargaining agreement settled, so we'll know. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll be able to predict early what the cost of our employees are going to be. Right. Um, so as soon as that's negotiated, we can look that we can look at that two three years out. As long as you know, but we can't anticipate is who's going to retire. Mm -hmm. You know. It is negotiated, but it's not ratified, so we can't, we have to wait until that happens, so. So I'm no longer going to wait year to year, I'm going to break it out for all three years, so we'll know what we're already jumping off at, as a percentage. Mm -hmm. And based on our enrollment at each grade level at this time, I'm not seeing um, the school making a big recommendation to the school committee for school choice openings. Um, if anything, it might just be in one or two grades at, at this point, just based on our numbers. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and we have uh, in sixth grade this year, six that are Right, oh wait, no, uh, sorry. Yeah. Six. Mm -hmm. So my guess is that next year it'll be in that same ballpark, right? But net-wise for the school, maybe lower. Maybe lower. But, uh, and the net income, anyway.
So again, once you vote this budget, I will put the whole package together with the narrative and I will email that out to you guys so that you will have that. Um, any other questions or? I am. I have a feeling that we're kind of you know, stuck in a rock and a hard place, kind of. Yeah. We can't really reduce it without. Big penalty. Yeah. We've got range of penalty from the state. The problem is, it gives an unfair focus to the school budget. So when you say you have an increase of ten percent, <coughs> people make the assumption. Yes that we are increasing. It's very hard to understand the reason. I'm talking person, you know, out there. And that's that's what I find unfortunate. And I hope that, and I think our finance and select board understand it well enough that they can explain it on town floor. Um, they certainly seemed comfortable with our explanation during the public hearing. And I don't know if I can make an assumption because they're not here tonight that that they're okay with it, but I haven't heard anything since then. Well, I think <clears throat> my sense is they, based on what questions they asked and didn't ask, or, right? You know, and how much discussion it led to, they got it, um, and I think you know you guys were out ahead of this with them too. Mm -hmm. So, and they, and, you know, we know how they appreciate that and. Well, and they so, also received, received the same letter from the Department of Ed right. that we received simultaneously. Yeah. So they, they were aware yeah. you know, that it was coming. Um, but even in just, just generally with the budget, I mean, you know, the, again, the reality is, aside from the state's thing, you know, maybe forcing our hand, uh, you know, for better or worse, you know, not necessarily. I mean, because the, the fact is, you look at it and you look what's been happening with enrollment, like, you know, this money's going to good, to good years right. and, you know, should be going there. So, um, and I think it's just, again, you know, with that, that um, this, this is, we've been building towards this. And, and if you look at this number and you look at this budget compared to when the last time we had this enrollment, this kind of enrollment, you know, just in nominal dollars and forgetting about the increased, increased costs in different, in different areas and inflation and so on, you know, it's it's the same or, or less. So, mm -hmm. you know, so in real dollars, it's 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 you know we're probably doing more with less than at that the last time we had these this number of students. So, um, it's not you know I think it's and I, and I feel like the select board gets that we're it, it, we're very responsibly spending the money in here. And so, um, you know. I, and I think everybody seems to understand it. The focus of all of our budgetary problems are not the faults of our towns or the faults of our school committees, but the faults of the legislatures um, and the formula of the state. And right. So. How many Chromebooks is this going to bring in the school? <coughs> Roughly. Another set. So we're hoping around 30. How many do we have already? Thirty. Okay. No. Make a motion to approve the budget, unless there's any further discussion. Oh, well, we have to ask. Okay. You can just say that we close the public hearing okay. at seven thirty. Since okay. we close the public hearing at seven thirty. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so yeah, so uh, I'll entertain motions on the uh, FY. Proposed FY17 budget. So moved. Second. Maisie, you second. Okay. Any further discussion? I think we got it. All right. All I just, oh, can I, sorry, can Please. I just make sure that we are, can you give me the figure? Because I have to enter oh, yeah, that right. directly into the minutes <clears throat> that you are voting. So FY17 SES requested town appropriation budget of for FY17 of uh, $2,376,190. Thank you. 
So, still moved? I think so, yeah. Still seconded? <laughs> still seconded. All right. All right. All in favor? Aye. Uh, the town meeting. Yeah. Is there the town meeting. Yeah. That's when this gets voted on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's it for um, unfinished business. We have no new business. Um, so just uh, reports. Any committee reports. Principal report. Great. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, our school council uh, recently met to uh, continue to work on our school improvement plan. The focus of this past meeting was on goal one, which is reinforce and expand the concept of school community, including collaboration between school, town, and community. In attendance at the meeting was a representative um, from the Farm to School Initiative, where they work, on, work with local farms to bring that produ produce into the schools. Um, this topic came about for, for our last meeting because a, a group of um, parents were expressing concern with some of the items that um, had been served, are being served in the cafeteria, included, including um, bagged pancakes, um, waffles, and French toast sticks, to, to, to name a few. Um, we do participate in the farm to school program, but to a much smaller extent. Um, the, the students are able to get fresh meals daily. We have a, a big salad bar with a wide variety of options. Um, there's also homemade soups most days of the week. Um, but with this farm to school program, we're looking to expand, um, expand and broaden our horizons, and we're looking at a harvest of the month program, where local foods will be featured a few times each month uh, on the menu. And so I thought a lot of good things came out of the um, out of the meeting. Um, some good ideas were brought up. Um, Maisie, did you want to add to that at all? Or? Yeah, I was really excited that this. Um, was brought up because I, personally I agree that there are some things on the menu that we just don't eat at home and I don't let my child buy because that's what's being served um, but this harvest of the month sounds really really cool um, they do a couple things so they work they not only work with local farms to source to hook us source us with the school but they also work with sort of like the publicity end in the school. They have like these trading cards and mm -hmm. posters and they had some other sort of good ideas on how to get um, kids to choose the whatever the featured menu item is for the month. And the featured mm -hmm. items are um, the kale, pears, tomatoes, carrots, like that kind of thing. Are they associated with the, um, with the state in any way? Do they dovetail with, with any of our, I mean we have <coughs> certain regulations and rules that we have to be in compliance with for our lunch programs. Right, so I think what they focus on is um, sort of featuring one vegetable or fruit a month, sort of hyping that up and, and, not, and not saying to the cafeteria you have to provide it every day this month, but featuring it and sort of making sure the kids are aware, pointing it out, oh, it's Pear Tuesday or, you know, how oh, okay. it's Tuesday or whatever. <coughs> they said like once or twice a month or... Yeah, and, and the, the Harvest of the Month, that's kind of a, a baseline program that, okay. that they offer. Um, like you said, we need to, the school, schools need to be in compliant, compliance with um, nutritional guidelines. And we're fully in compliance, but at the same time, can we look at our menu and see if there are areas where we can continue to improve on it? I think with better. all the requirements and color of our vegetables, that this will be very helpful uh, in the rotation by doing um, the different harvests. Because not only do we have vegetable requirements, we have color of vegetable mm -hmm. requirements too. So I think this would just add to that. Absolutely. 
I think that's great. I, yeah. I hope, are you going to involve the cafeteria people at some point? Yeah, so our cafeteria <coughs> manager was in attendance oh, at the okay, meeting. Oh, okay, good. So good. Um, she's going to be working with the representative from the farm to school program. And I, and I think it's going to be a good good thing going forward. That's do we do great. breakfast and lunch? We do. So we because do. The, the, the ones that you listed that seem to be getting some of the complaints seem to be primarily breakfast. So with this. And those are served at lunch, breakfast too. Lunch. Okay. Pancake in a bag. Pancake, Pancake in, a bag. in a bag. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it's um, they they meet the nutritional guidelines, um, but but at the same time, I, I think there's there's opportunities just like in all other areas of the building to to look at what we do and see if, see if we can improve as well. Usually at our last meeting, Patty, we have our um, participation rates for yeah. school lunches. So I'd be curious. To have those again the, to the, compare them. the yeah. numbers that were given to us by our cafeteria managers that on a given day between 130 and 140 students buy hot lunch and there, i mean there's a wide wide variety of options um there's the main hot lunch meal each day there's a salad bar option soup um turkey sandwich grilled cheese uh sun butter and jelly so there there is a definitely a nice Nice variety that the kids get to choose from. Okay, good. Um, we just recently held an election here at Sunderland Elementary School, and we are the only school in the district um, that has voting take place at the school um, when, when school is in session. And um, following that day, there was a, a couple concerns that were um, brought to my office as well as central office and um, to the town, uh, town selectmen about our, our practices uh, of what we do um, from a safety standpoint um, at Sunderland Elementary School. We, we already do have a number of safety procedures in place. Um, however, last week, last week um, myself, um, the fire chief, um, a police representative, the town clerk, and uh, the town administrator, um, we met to look at plans going forward. And so on this um, page here, I've outlined a number of additional steps that um, we're going to be taking going forward, including um, on all voting days when school is in session, one police officer is going to be present at the building between 7.30 and 5.30 p.m. Um, in, in addition to the regular school day, uh, this time period reflects our out-of-school time hours as well. A second police officer will be present during the busiest times of the day, which are arrival and dismissal. Uh, from uh, That should read 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Um, and 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. as well. Um, I'll be in constant communication with the police officers throughout the day. Uh, the town of Sunderland will be responsible for arranging police coverage and paying uh, them as well. Uh, one thing, one practice we've always done is we've hired additional staff for that day for hallway monitors. Um, boxed breakfast and lunches will be served to students in their classrooms. Students in grades one through six will only use the West Wing bathrooms, which are the bathrooms located down here by the library. Um, also, students in, in grades one, one through six will enter and exit the building here by the library. One of the concerns that was brought to us is that um, regular townsfolk and students are entering the building at, at the same time. And it was a, a little, little chaotic in the morning with the, the large number of voters that were coming in. Um, additionally, preschool and kindergarten students will um, arrive and be dismissed through the early childhood playground. Recess will be held indoors. Um, uh, double, the double doors leading to both wings in the school will be locked. A, uh, the, an election day constable will be the station by the double doors that connect the gymnasium and the early childhood wing. And as always, if a student needs to go to the nurse's office, the classroom teacher will communicate with the nurse uh, via radio or uh, telephone. And that student will travel with a buddy and or the nurse will meet them at the double doors. So well, let me just give you a little history. When this building, when we got permission from the townspeople to build this building, 
originally. It was billed as a, uh, a community center. It was going to be used for multiple purposes, not just a school. And so the um, purpose of having elections here was for, first and foremost in, in many people's mind. And it was not problematic. And then 9-11 happened. And since then, people have had a very different feeling about having the building so accessible during voting times. I will say this is the only school in the four towns that has voting in it. All of the other towns have voting in their town hall or another town building. So we have always had to close school for president or for national elections in November for the district because of, of the way Sunderland does voting. When I talked to the town clerk, um, because we did get a lot of concerns about how voting occurred uh, this last um, primary election. Um, you know, I said, are there other, is there another facility that we could do elections? And um, she said, no, that there wasn't, and uh, that we really didn't have anything large enough to accommodate. And the fact she was rock right, she reminded me back in the mid-90s that we sold this building as, as someplace that voting was going to be done. We used to incorporate it as part of a civics lesson years ago with kids, you know. Citizens are coming to vote. This is what they're doing. We take them around, and it was very nice. But, um, but I think that comfort level um, has dissipated. Mm -hmm. So, And it just so happens with the proposed school calendar <clears throat> for next year, the second day students are here will be a uh, state primary. So it's important that we get these procedures in place. But I also think in a way it's sad because I think that is a missed opportunity to, to have students become informed on civic duty and responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, was just, I agree. It's kind of a, I mean, you know, <clears throat> safety is, is obviously, you know, paramount at mm -hmm. all times, but you know, I just, I, I, you know, just be careful that we, we don't over mm -hmm. re react. And I'm not saying that this is an overreaction, mm -hmm. and, 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 but, but, but just um, because you do lose things, you know, and, 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 and I, kids should feel safe, uh, in, yeah. you know, when there's, when a community function like voting is happening, I mean, just like I, you know, I would want kids to feel safe when they're at the basketball tournament over the weekend, and lots of townspeople are are there, and lots of kids are there, and and um, so, you know, I mean, I get I get the I get concerns, and I know we we have to maintain safety right. in the building. Um, I just want us to be careful about what that means, and how often do we really need a police officer? you know, to be in the building mm -hmm. um, all day and what that represents. Um, I would hope that you could involve him. We used to have students who would be student graders at the door. Yeah. That was before we had locks and cameras on yeah. doors. And we had students who did, ex sixth graders who did exit polling. Yeah. You know, they had some particular topics that they would, and, and I thought it, it helped um, ingrain that process into them as they as they went forward because we, we do do that on the secondary level we have uh, kids who do exit pollings from the high school and they go to all the uh, polling sites um, so you know perhaps there's there's some sort of balance that could be struck so that kids are not overly frightened of something that's a typical and um, encouraged process right um, but are somehow informed about it as well. I would echo the sentiments. I, I credit you for coming up with this plan so quickly mm -hmm. uh, after it. Uh, but at the same time, I, there is a balance. I think the school should be like a community center. Uh, it should be the heartbeat of the town. It should be welcoming. Uh, I don't want my kids hiding behind doors with guards because we're electing people. Mm -hmm. um, at the same rate, I do want them safe. I, I love the idea of involving kids mm -hmm. in civics lessons. Uh, but again, there needs to be a balance between the safety and the, the open engagement of the school. But at the same time, I do credit you for coming up with the, the idea so quickly and, it, and responding. And 
the, the tricky thing is where is that balance? Yeah. You know, and, and if you think that the other 179 days of the school year, <coughs> the school is completely locked up. And then this one day it's, it's basically wide open, you know, and that's, it's a big change. Mm -hmm. it, it is. And um, I don't, but without having all of these systems in place this year, we still had students in the upper grades in one through six coming down in this end of the building. And they were still had going with the buddy to the nurse. Um, and I don't, I don't think, there was never anything that was formally jotted down on, on a document. Um, at least I haven't come across it yet. And this year there's a lot of voting that's going on. I think there's more of, uh, elections this year than, than normal. So, anyway. Thanks. And finally, um, back to the first page, we have MCAS testing coming up, MCAS 2.0. Uh, grade 3 will be April 4th and 5th. Grades 4 and 6 will be the 6th and the 7th. And grade 5 will be March 30th and 31st. Um, also this evening, we had a fourth grade parent meeting for Nature's Classroom. Uh, report cards are released, uh, PTO tomorrow night. Report cards are released on Friday. Number of early release days. Uh, Parent-teacher conferences are coming up in April along with Arts Night and Family Fun Night. Um, more MCAS testing, kindergarten, screening, preschool visitation, our annual walk and roll to school day, our sixth grade step up day has been scheduled for May 24th, other field trips, our community service day is scheduled for May 27th, more field trips, another visitation day, Junior Olympics, and June, 3rd, or June 8th is sixth grade graduation, with our last day of school on Monday, June 13th, and that's a half day of school. So a lot is packed into the last few months of the school year here. And the last day is creeping up. Yes, it is. It's got it. Yeah, I passed out to your report, and I had told you about this earlier. We had our district self self assessment for the Department of Ed, and um, we uploaded all the documents. And last Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the audit team came. Um, it was only for the high school, um, and they audited this on critical <coughs> assessment and student services. Um, I did ask if they were going to come back and do an audit of the elementary schools, and they said highly unlikely. So that's the news I'm passing on to you. Was this the meeting that Mr. Modesto was at as well? And yeah. Was, because I thought it was very funny to, to hear how it went, and I think it shows a disconnect. A very disconnect. From that side of the state to this guy. A very big disconnect. Um, first of all, they told us that they were auditing the Frontier Regional School District and they wanted elementary materials. And then when I started giving them elementary materials, they said, oh, we're just auditing the high school. Okay, we said Frontier Regional School District. Oh, we didn't realize it was a K-12 through district. So right away, they're sending an audit team out for three and a half days without really knowing the district. Um, and then when they were talking about comparing MCAS scores, I said, well, there's only 14 districts in the state that are created in our model of 7 through 12 district. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the 7 through 12 district. And of those 14, only eight took MCAS. The others took PARC. So we were being compared to only eight other schools in the state that were all from the eastern part of the state. And they didn't know that. So the cred my credibility factor and what they were telling us and recommendations went down quite a bit. Um, we are going to get um, you know, a report, but their assessment is only based on our MCAS scores. And when they said, well, what other data you know, do you use and pass on to teachers? And I said, well, 
graduation rate or attendance rate or discipline rate, the schools that they're accepted to, to the percentage rate of the schools they're accepted to are far more important to me than their MCAS scores. And their 10th grade MCAS scores are excellent. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it was an awful lot of work for a very disconnected, disjointed audit. And in fairness, they are doing a different model. And we were the first ones to get this model. They're doing a targeted review rather than a comprehensive review. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but they said it was very different. So, um, so I was, I was <clears throat> unhappy because they presented some kind of negativity with our faculty that I thought was unnecessary. So. Um, so anyway, it's over and done with. We're waiting for the report. Um, I did have a chance last Friday to meet with the Franklin and Hampshire and Hamden uh, superintendents with the 16 legislators that I had talked to you about. We had four state senators um, and then um, 12 state, state reps, and I listed them here. We spent a lot of time talking about choice and charter. Um, we also discussed that they have always underfunded regional transportation. Last couple of years, I think last year was at 80 percent, or it's the closest to 100 percent I've seen in a long time. It's been 60, it's been 40. Mm -hmm. um, early childhood education and this formation of rural schools. So there are <clears throat> a number of us who are from rural schools, uh, not just in the western part of the state, but actually some from the Cape are being invited as well to meet on the 23rd. Because the proposal is that perhaps, because we're being hit differently with our funding formula um, in schools east of 495, that, that perhaps there should be some sort of differential, especially for, for the transportation issues. So. So we'll see what comes of it, but I'm glad that there's momentum and interest for people to continue the discussion. Um, we're continuing with our policy subcommittee. We meet again on Monday night. Um, I know everyone's happy that the superintendent search is over. That was gobs of hours. I thank everyone who was involved. And as I mentioned earlier, we have reached consensus with our elementary teachers and IAs contracts. So we're waiting for the final language and for them to be ratified. And we have started with the high school, so that's what I had. So how was it? Uh, did they did they have anything interesting to say about charter and choice? Um, I guess it's why I'm not a politician. Uh, I I really appreciate the fact that they were there because they didn't have to be there, and I appreciate that so many other superintendents were there and echoed the same comments. But they are very artful of using a lot of words, and then afterwards you go, I'm not sure what they just said. <laughs> and so that, that was my takeaway from it. Um, I do think we have a friend in Stan Rosenberg, but by his own admission, he, he even though he's president of the Senate, um, there's a lot of pushback in the eastern part of the state. And he does fully understand how it negatively impacts our, our school districts. Um, they are seeing similar things in early childhood throughout the state. One of the common occurrences is that behavior issues are becoming so profound in two, three, and four-year-olds that private preschools are kicking kids out and then the public schools are having to come and deal with, with um, the problem behaviors. So that that could be an influx of what we're seeing for special ed. So, you know, not that misery loves company, but sometimes it's nice to hear that it's that it's problematic everywhere. Um, they haven't quite figured out how to address it address it in the funding, but they are aware of it. So no, I have no feeling of of anything that is going to change. I have. Um, I think that the cap is going to be voted to be lifted. I think you're going to see um, a very speedy creation of some additional charter schools. In Western um, Mass? Or? Um, throughout the state, you're going to see them in pockets here and there. Um, and I said, you know, I, what aggravates me is, and I gave this example, that there is a school 
in Springfield. It's a charter school, and they have an ad on TV. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's a little kid, cute little kid. And he's going, come to so-and-so charter school. Get a private education at no cost. So that's, that's how most people in public education feel about it. Um, Great, let's have private school at level education for all <laughs> kids um, and fund that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm all for it, let's fund it. But it's, we're not funding it, so, so, then, so then we're going to just fund it for some. And then and the money gets, you know, we have, I mean, the towns don't, the towns pay for it, the towns don't, you know, vote the budgets on the schools. Anyway. Well, I have heard some traction from different boards of selectmen in Franklin, New Hampshire County, who are going to invite the heads of some charter schools to their annual town meetings. They have no leverage to require them to be there, but boy, I would love to see them. I would love to see them at least sit there and have to answer some questions, you know, about where the funding goes, what their programs are about. Um, How are they outfitted for technology? Do they have one-to-one -one devices for right. all their students? <clears throat> And what is well, their special, special ed population? Age, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what's right. really happening is, is, you know, then. And again, you true. know, I have to publicly keep saying I am not opposed to charter schools. I'm opposed to the way that they are regulated and I'm opposed to the way that they are funded. So. So. Yeah. And I think I'm, uh, anyway, I'm, <laughs> um, sorry, a little diversion that I, in terms of keeping going, but thank you for the report. You're welcome. <clears throat> All right. That's, uh, that's our agenda. I got one quick question. Have the other yeah. three towns, elementary schools, adopted their budgets as well? Uh, everybody but Conway, who will do so tomorrow, tomorrow night. night. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, entertaining a uh, motion to adjourn. Who's doing it? <laughs> Me. All right. Yeah, Michelle. Who's going to second? Second. Hey. All right. <laughs> all in favor? <laughs> 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 Got to go to the now. Thank you.